Hello everyone and welcome back to .NET Core Central. Today we are diving deep into C Sharp tuples and all their advanced features. Whether you are a beginner or an experienced developer, this video will give you a comprehensive understanding of how to use tuples effectively in your C Sharp code. So let's get started. And the topics that we are going to cover today are introduction to tuples, creating and using tuples, name tuples, tuples with method, tuple deconstruction, and a couple of other advanced features. So first thing first, what is a tuple? In C Sharp, a tuple is a data structure that allows us to group multiple values into a single object. So we can think of it as a lightweight way to return multiple values from a method without creating a custom class or a structure. And that is how we mostly use tuple. But tuple can be, of course, used more than just being a return type. So first, let's declare a tuple. And I can declare a tuple called person. And I can give a name age and an address. And here I just declared a tuple in line and that is what tuple is. And then I can do a console.write line and I can print the name, age and the CD. And here the item one declares the first item, item two is the second item and item three is the third item. The intelligence automatically knows there are only three items and it also knows the type of each item. And it is strongly typed, which makes it better for compile time error and warnings as well. So now let me run this application. And once I run this, I should see expected result of name, age, and city. Now let's look into a name tuple. So what is a name tuple? Name tuples make our code more readable by allowing us to name the element of a tuple. So here, instead of just saying John, I can say name, age, and city. And if I do that, my code is going to change accordingly. It will now have name, age, and city and I can print three and I should be getting the exact same response as before. The third thing I wanted to cover today is tuples with method. And this is a very interesting and extremely cool feature in my opinion, because this is something we can use in certain scenarios. So I can start with string name, age, string, city. And then I can say get person and return. And then what I can do here, I can say var person is equal to get person. And then I can do the same thing. I can do a console.write. And this is going to print the exact same output. But this time, instead of creating a tuple just by declaring a variable, I'm creating a function which helps me to introduce some logic also inside it and encapsulate the entire process. This is how in a lot of scenarios you will be using tuples. This is one of the most widely used feature that goes with tuple. Now let's talk about the next feature, which is tuple deconstruction. And for that, we can go the same way. We can just have person declare like this. And then you can deconstruct it. So you can say name, age, and city. So now we have deconstructed the person into a tuple. And then we can do console.write and use the deconstructed values. Instead of using person.name, age, and city, we can just deconstruct. This is extremely helpful when you are using tuple defined by some other library which doesn't have a named tuple. 
the deconstruction really works well because you can provide better readability just deconstructing the tuple. And if I run this, I should get the same response as before. Now let's talk about a couple of advanced features. The first feature that I want to talk about is comparing tuples. So we can say var person one is equal to, and then I can say var person two, and var person three, I'm going to again say same as var person one. Now if I do console.writeline and console.writeline, the first one is comparing person one to person two and it's going to return false because they're not going to match. The second one is person one to person three and it's going to match, so it's going to return true. And as we can see, it does value-based comparison and based on that, it is returning true or false. This is, in my opinion, can be very handy when you are using tuples in a large-scale application. The next one I wanted to cover is, while tuple can technically hold multiple elements, it is not recommended for tuple to hold more than seven elements because it is not readable, first of all. And if you need more than six or seven element, it's better to create a class or a structure. But nevertheless, here is an example of a large tuple. So I can create var large tuple. I can do item 10. We just print the three, first two, and the last. Other thing I can do here is I can declare these three itself as another tuple. So I can say tuple dot create. And I can create a tuple for this. Now there is no item 10. I have only till item 8 because 8, 9, 10 is same. And it is going to print 8, 9, 10 tuple for the last one. Now for this scenario, there is another way of showing it. Now we will get rest. So rest is essentially gets the current tuples rest of the element after the seven. So if you have six, the rest is not going to work. Rest work only for seven. And that is why it is recommended that you should not have more than seven elements in a tuple. If it is more than seven element, go ahead and create a class. But here we can do it. And when we do it, more than seven can be declared as rest. And rest, again, given we have a tuple here, we can have item one, and this is going to print eight, nine, 10. If we had another thing for the tuple as 12, then we can do rest dot item two. And now if I print it out, you can see one, two, and then item one for rest is eight, nine, 10, a tuple, and item two is over there. So that is how tuple breaks seven and plus. Now, another advanced feature that I wanted to talk about is tuple can also be used with link to perform complex operations. So let's do something here. Let's declare var numbers is equal to memorable dot range one to 10. And then I can select var tuples equal to number dot select. And I'm just doing the number itself and the square of the number. Now I can go ahead and 
I can say straightforward. Uh, Copilot is suggesting me the code. Here I'm saying var, I'm taking the tuples and I am deconstructing each tuple into number and a square and I'm printing out the number and the square. And if I do that, it is printing out the square and the number of each element. And this shows really great examples of tuple. Before we wrap up, now let's talk about some of the best practices. It's better to use named tuple instead of item one, item two. It's better for readability. As I mentioned before also, avoid tuples with more than seven elements. It is not suggested. Use tuple for simple data structure, not for complex data structure. For complex data structure, go ahead and use classes, records, and structures. Always deconstruct tuples to make your code look very cleaner. That is all I wanted to cover for today's video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you think you are getting value out of this channel, then subscribe to the channel. And thanks so much for watching the video.